Dit is Papa Alfa No Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate voor vandaag 1 oktober 2016. Dit is het Brutte van Zaterdag. Vandaag is de O weer in de maand, al heb ik geen idee wat dat betekent en of het wel iets betekent. Bliep er de bliep. Kleine wijzigingen in de ochtendeditie. In de uitzending van gisteren zat per abuis de propagatieverwachting van een week geleden. TX Talk heeft een nieuwe website en de datum was niet direct duidelijk. Vanochtend in de Daily Minutes de versie voor komende week. Small mistake in yesterday evening's version of the Daily Minutes. We had last week's propagation bulletin. This morning we have the proper version. Bleep er de bleep. Today's bulletin will be almost entirely in English. We will have some Morse code today and an SSTV image which will include Willem PA3 CTA's new fairly adorable cat duo. We start with the propagation bulletin and right at the end we will have an item on the IR, IR alt Loper. And right at the end we will have an item on the I uh, Loper. <laughs> And right at the end we will have an item on the IRLP system. I think it was the first voice over IP system for Ham Radio, even before the start of Echo Link. If we have some time for it, we will also have some news items. This is GB2RS, the news broadcasting service of the Radio Society of Great Britain. It comes to you from G4NJH in Nottingham. You can find the text on the RSGB's own web pages. Good morning, it's Sunday the 2nd of October 2016. This is GB2RS News. Now for the radio propagation report compiled by G0KYAG3YLAG4BAO. Last week was dominated by extensive geomagnetic disturbances thanks to ongoing coronal hole activity on the Sun. Coronal holes are areas with open magnetic field lines that allow plasma to escape as a high-speed stream. This plasma impacts at the Earth, causing aurora and unsettled HF conditions, especially on paths over the poles. The K index was pushed up to 5 and even 6 throughout the latter half of the week, bringing a mixed bag of HF propagation. At time, the maximum usable frequency was suppressed with noisy HF bands and very poor propagation, but there were highlights with enhanced HF propagation at times, up to and including 21 megs. DX heard in the UK included D66D, Comoros and Sugar 9 BT, Sao Tome. Next week, NOAA pre- predicts very unsettled geomagnetic conditions for Sunday the 2nd and the first half of the week and unsettled conditions for the remainder. The solar flux index will be in the range of 80 to 85 with a chance for C-class solar flare activity. Because of the way HF conditions can change quickly, we suggest keeping a close eye on the 20 to 15 metre bands as short-lived openings may occur at any time during daylight hours. As we head into October, DX is being worked and conditions will continue to improve. VHF and up at the end of last week saw the finish up to very unsettled weather this week. High pressure is due to build to the east of Britain, over Scandinavia and eventually link up with another area of high pressure over Biscay. This should provide some modest tropo prospects at time for many areas, although Ireland and the western Scotland may remain too breezy for any significant inversions to develop. The limiting factor of the tropo may well prove to be fairly dry, low-level air under the inversion, so the better conditions will be seen when there is evidence of moisture near the surface, like fog and mist. Wednesday sees the Draconids meteor shower. Don't get too excited, though, as it only has a low zenithal hourly rate. It's a bit of an odd one in that the radiant is highest as darkness falls, giving higher meteor rates in the evening. Moon declination reaches maxim- sorry, minimum on Friday, so EME moon windows are short. And to this high losses, and this week for EME system maintenance is for, uh, rather for system maintenance and improvement, the sun's declination is falling given a maximum sun elevation of 35 degrees this week. So now is the time for sun cold sky measurements before it's too low to clear ground noise. And that's it for this week from the propagation team. Foundations of Amateur Radio. Technology is a moving feast. New ideas spring new inventions which in turn change our lives. Amateur Radio is at the forefront of such inventions. Radio amateurs have been, until recently, the only soldering iron brigade around. We've been building things for over a 100 years and we continue as a community to think of new ideas and ways to make them happen. For example, we take technologies like All Star Link, Echo Link, wires and so on all in our stride. We think nothing of having our radios connected to each other using techniques other than radio spectrum. 
In November 1997, when iPhone still meant internet phone, an inquisitive 22-year-old amateur called Dave Cameron, VE7LTD, came up with a way to link a radio to the internet, and the first three internet radio linking project stations were connected to each other, and the now global network of IRLP nodes was born. Dave built a DTMF decoder which allowed remote control of a computer, and the radio that was attached to it, and made it possible to send the audio from the radio to the sound card of the computer, which in turn sent that audio in digital format across the internet, to a similarly equipped system where the audio was turned back into a radio transmission. This bridging idea took off and many different systems were developed, many of which are in active use today. The various systems all use some form of voice over IP to transmit audio across the internet, but there are many variations on how the audio gets to the system in the first place. In IRLP, as I mentioned, the audio can only come in via an amateur radio. Echolink uses a similar system, but in addition to amateur radio as a source, you can register your call sign and use several different applications on your computer or mobile phone to link into the network. Allstar takes this idea further. Instead of making a point-to-point -point connection, the Allstar system is based around an open source telephone exchange called Asterisk, and it's used to link together the various systems. Other variations also exist. The idea of using voice over IP techniques spawned a whole set of radio technologies that use similar methodologies to compress voice, and then instead of transmitting it across the internet, use radio waves to send them from one radio to the next. Technologies such as D-Star, System Fusion, Motobro and DMR built on this idea. Of course, these technologies also use the internet to share information and connect users across the globe. There is some contention around these systems. Many amateurs consider them to be not real radio. But then I suspect if you look at the birth of SSB, you'll find die-hard CW operators with a similar complaint. The same is true for low-power propagation modes like WSPR, which aren't real radio because you cannot have a QSO. Other issues in the technical sphere also exist. The IRLP software is closed source. You can only buy IRLP hardware from one place and it doesn't allow you to connect in any other way than via a radio. Echolink now charges for conferences being registered in the system. In the past I've already spoken about Fusion, D-Star and Motobro and their restrictions around interoperability, licensing and closed source nature. From a practical perspective, there are also concerns about the use of these systems in the case of massive failures during local disasters and the like. If the internet is down, many of these systems will simply become local radio networks. Coverage could perhaps be extended by creating a local mesh network, but HF radio still very much has its place in our world. For me, this is all about learning and innovation. Ultimately, which system you use is up to you. I live in a software world where open source rules for good reason, and my vote will always go to open source. To be clear, I'm not adverse to making money, we all have to pay the rent, but making innovation and invention secret is not the way to go in our hyper-connected world. I'm Ono, Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima Alpha Bravo.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Vandaag beginnen we aan een nieuwe rubriek, de Ham Horoscoop. Ja, je hoort het goed. Daily Minutes heeft na een uitgebreide speurtocht een sterrenwiggelaar gevonden met een achtergrond in de amateurwereld. Die vanaf nu iedere dag een horoscoop voor amateurs met een bepaald sterrenbeeld zal trekken. Vandaag de horoscoop voor schorpioenamateurs voor dit weekend. Schorpioenamateurs zijn geboren tussen 24 oktober en 22 november. Cursus verlopen dit weekend harmonieus en advies, zoals je van bijvoorbeeld een ervaren mede-amateur krijgt, zal op maat gesneden blijken te zijn. Een idee over je antennesituatie moet waarschijnlijk worden herzien. Je bent bij lokale verbindingen graag gezien bij je etervrienden. Ze lijken je overal te kunnen vinden. Ga dit weekend in op uitnodigingen en verras jezelf door eens een amateurband of een modulatiesoort te kiezen waar je niet zo vaak komt. Of je nu wilt of niet, je moet je aandacht richten op die ene zaak in je amateurstation waar iets aan schort. Maak daar dus ook tijd voor vrij. Het belooft een druk en productief weekend voor je te worden, ook op het niet-amateurfront.